Hi, this is Mrs. Robertson, and today we are on, we are going to be doing lesson three from chapter six, and the title is Algebra, Variables, and Expressions. This is located on page 449. Now, before we get going on the lesson, let's go back and look at what your answers were on the bell work for today. So that's on page 448. So I'm going to reflect back to page 448, your bell work. And here are the answers that you should have on page 448. Number 27. Kaylee wants to buy four pencils and three notebooks. Which of the following represents the total cost? Select all that apply. So on this page here, four pencils, so four times 50, three notebooks, three times 225. Well, the first one definitely covers that. Um, now, four times 50 cents, that would be $2. And three times 225, five, six, seven, um, six, so when you add two dollars plus six seventy-five, you will also check eight dollars and seventy-five cents. So for number twenty-seven, you should have these two boxes checked. Number twenty-eight, Denzel has three and two-thirds boxes of party favors. One full box contains fifteen bags of flavors or favors, and each bag has three favors in it. In addition to this, he has seven extra party favors that are not in bags or boxes. Select the correct operation to model a numerical expression for the total number of party favors. So we need to select our operations over here and put it over that. So, three and two thirds. I think there's a mistake that should say um, two thirds. Let's put a three instead of a five on that and we have um, 15 bags. One full box has 15 bags, so we're going to multiply it by 15. Then each one of those has three favors in it, so we're going to multiply it by three, and then you're going to add the seven. And then the answer that you will get for this problem here um, 11 thirds times 15 over 1 times 3 over 1 plus 7. Well, the 3's will cancel out and turn into 1's, and 11 times 15 will give us... Now, back to this problem. We have 11 times 15... Place value zero. You have 165, and then add the seven. So 165 plus seven will give you 172 party favors. That one was a little challenging. See, there you can see it, a little challenging. Now let's go and look at 29 to 33. Finding missing numbers. All right, in number 29, 131 plus what is 140? Well, this is easy, nine. Here, this one's a little harder. What minus six is 354? Well, if you take 354 and add six, you're gonna get the answer of 360. Here, what plus 210 is 224? Well, 14. You could probably do that one in your head. If not, 224 minus 210 will give you the answer 14. Number 32, you skip counting and the number line to find the missing number. Well, I think you all know the answer to this one is 4. And if you would start at 0 and you would go over one, two, three, four groups of three equal 12. 
And now, the last problem is about Sophie. And it says, Sophie earns $7 an hour babysitting and $8 an hour for cleaning the house. Last week, she babysat for three hours and cleaned for two. How much did Sophie earn? Well, seven times three, that's the babysitting, and cleaning is eight times two. So you have 21 plus 16, and that will equal $37. Now, let's go to our lesson um, in the book. Lesson three, algebra, variables, and expressions. Page 449. All right, algebra is a language of symbols including variables. It's the language of mathematics, kids. A variable is a symbol, usually a letter, used to represent a number. Scan the lesson to complete the graphic organizer. Variable. Well, the technical math meaning of a variable is, and please write this down, a symbol usually a letter to represent a number. Not a whole lot of space. You represent a, instead of the word number, I'm going to use this. This represents the word number. Math meaning. A symbol, usually a letter, to represent a number. Everyday meaning. Um, a variable means it's able to change. Variable can change. The value can change. That's what the word variable means. It could vary. What are examples of variables? The most popular one is X, Y, A. Any letter would be fine. And what are not examples? They're actual numbers. If you had a 3, uh, a negative 10, those are examples of non-variables. They're actual numbers. Okay, we're going to skip the real world link below and go on to page 450. Make sure you have this copied down. On page 450, evaluate a one-step expression. Okay. Get that straightened up. Algebraic expressions contain at least one variable and at least one operation. Operations are add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Those are our four mathematical operations. For example, the expression n plus 2 represents the sum of an unknown number n2. n represents the unknown number. Expressions do not have equal signs. See, this is an expression. It does not have an equal sign. The letter here, let's go on to this part. The letter X is often used as a variable. To avoid confusion with the symbol X, there are other ways to show multiplication. And I've been doing this throughout the year. A dot can mean multiplying. This is my favorite parentheses. And when you have a number next to a variable, that also means multiplying. The variables in an expression can be replaced with any number. Once the variable, that's your letter, variables have been replaced, you can evaluate or find the value of the algebraic expression. Let's look at the examples below. Evaluate 16 plus b if b is 25. Well, kids, let's write this down. 16 plus 25, that's what that means and your sum is going to be 41. Now let's look at example two. Evaluate x minus y. If x is 64 and y is 27. All right, 
So you're just going to have 64 minus 27. Borrow. And your answer is 37. Pretty easy. In this problem, that says 6 times x. So 6 times a half. 6, I'll use a dot this time, times 1 half. Gently pick the 6 up and put a 1 under it. When you multiply, you end up with 6 over 2, and that simplifies to 3. So 6 times a half is 3. Any questions? All right, now let's do A, B, C, and D. These are pretty easy. All right. Replace A with 6, B with 4, and C with 1 third. Here you will have 6 plus 8, and that equals 14. In letter B, 6 minus 4, that equals 2. A times B, 6 times 4. I'm going to write it like this, and that equals 24. 9 times C, 9 times 1 third. I'm just going to gently pick the 9 up and put a 1 under it. You would end up with 9 over 3, and that equals 3. You can also simplify before you multiply. Let's go on to page 451. Here, we are going to evaluate multi-step expressions. So these expressions, the ones we're going to do next, will require more than one step. To evaluate multi-step expressions, replace each variable with the correct value and follow the order of operations. All right. Now, the order of operations, PEMDAS parentheses, exponents, then you do multiplication and division, but if the division comes first, you do division, and you end with addition and subtraction. If the subtraction sign comes first, you do the subtraction. All right, so this says five times t plus four, if t equals three. It is not, not, not 53, it's five times three. So. 5 times 3 plus 4. 5 times 3 will give you 15. And 15 plus 4 is the answer 19. Please write it down like this. That's 5 times 3. Now let's go on to number 5. Here we have an exponent. We're going to replace x with 1 eighth. So this is 4, I'm going to put a dot this time, times 1 eighth to the second power. Okay, 1 eighth to the second power over here means 1 eighth times 1 eighth. That equals 1 over 64. So this will equal 4 over 1 times 1 over 64. That will equal 4 over 64, and when you simplify it, 4 divides 4 once, 4 divides 64 16 times, and it simplifies to 1 16th. They're getting a little harder on this page. Number 6, evaluate. This says 10 times A plus 7, so 10 and since I'm multiplying by a fraction, I'm going to put a 1 underneath it, times 1 fifth plus 7. Well, we have to do our multiplying first. I'm going to simplify before I multiply. 5 divides 5 once, 5 divides 10 two times. You'll end up with 2 over 1. 2 times 1 is 1, 2, 1 times 1 is 1. So that will equal 2 plus 7, and your final answer is a 9. Now, if you were filling this in, um, you would have 10 times 1 over 5 
plus 7. 10 times 1 fifth is 2, and 2 plus 7 is 9. Now let's do E, F, and G. Here we go. Letter E. 2 times D, which is 12, minus 5. 2 times 12 is 24, and 24 minus 5 equals 19. So the answer to the expression is 19. Now let's do letter F. I'll do letter F over here. 50 minus 3 times D, which is 12. So that will be 50 minus 3 times 12 is 36. Now, 50 minus 36 will equal 14. The answer is 14. Now I'm going to do letter G over here. 9 times 1 third to the second power. Okay? So that's going to be 9 times 1 third times 1 third is 1 over 9. Well, that will, I'm going to gently pick the, oh, you can't see that, can you? I'm going to gently pick the 9 up and put a 1 under it, and that'll be 9 over 9, which equals 1. All right. Now we're going to go to page 452. On page 452, example 7, it says uh, this person is wrapping a gift for his brother's birthday. The box has side lengths that are a half a foot. Use the expression 6 times s squared, where s represents the length of a side, to find the surface area of the box he is wrapping. Write your answer in square feet. Now, there are six sides to a cube, and to find the area of a cube, you uh, multiply one-half times one-half, and then take that times, um, times six. We'll study this formula more after the winter break when we are doing our geometry unit. So, here they have, let's just write it down to, they have it here, six times one-half squared. I'm going to put a dot there. Now, one-half times one-half is one-fourth. So, six over one times one-fourth. That equals six over four, which equals one and two-fourths, which simplifies to one and a half feet squared. That's another way of writing it than square feet. Let's do the guided practice together here. All right. Number one, three plus m. m is four, z is nine, r is one six. So three plus four equals seven. Very easy. Let's do number two, z minus m, nine minus four. Nine minus four equals five. Another easy problem. This says 12 times r. r is the fraction 1 6. So I'm going to write 12 as a fraction times r, which is 1 6. You can simplify before you multiply or multiply straight across. 12 times 1 is 12. 1 times 6 is 6. 12 over 6 equals 2. The answer is 2. Now we have our two-step expressions. In number 4, 4 times m minus 2. m is 4. It's not 44. 4 times 4 minus 2. 4 times 4 is 16. Minus 2 gives you the answer of 14. Let's do number 5. 
60 times r. Now r is the fraction, so I'm going to write 60 as a fraction. 60 over 1 times 1 sixth and then subtract 4. Well 60 times 1 is 60 and you end up with 60 over 6 minus 4. 60 over 6 is the same thing as 10 and 10 minus 4 gives you the final answer of 6. Let's go on to number 6. In problem number 6, we have 3 times r squared. 3 times 1 sixth squared. So 1 sixth times 1 sixth equals 1 over 36. So I'm going to write 3 as a fraction, 3 over 1 times 1 over 36. That equals 3 over 36, which equals 1, when you simplify it, over 12. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 36 divided by 3 is 12. Now let's look at problem number 7. The amount of money that remains from a $20 bill after Molina buys four party favors for P dollars each is 20 minus 4 times P. So they've given you the expression. That's helpful. Now, find the amount remaining if each favor is $3. Okay, P stands for dollar, so you're going to replace the P with 3. So, 20 minus 4 times 3. So, 4 times 3 is 12. 20 minus 12 equals 8. And the answer is $8. Now, for your homework, I would like for your classwork and homework. First, I would like for you to do page 453, all, 1 to 10. On page 454, I would like for you to do the house problem, number 11. And then I would also like for you to do 12, 13, and 14. If you have extra time, feel free to do the problems on page 455, but those are not required. Hopefully we'll have enough time to do these in class, and you can have them graded before it's time to go. Have a good day.